This is series one, episode ninety five. Today is the twenty eighth of November, twenty twenty one. This is my weekend stock market update. As usual, I will discuss the general market conditions, show you what I'm seeing, and then I'll talk about some COVID plays and my stocks that I own and the positivities that I can see in the market, at least now anyway. I will be covering a lot of information here, things I've never covered before. So if you're interested to learn a lot more about the stock markets, please stay tuned to the video. Here is my disclaimer. Everything I talk about in this video is for informational purposes only. If you decide to take action upon that information, that is your decision. You are responsible for all of your trading decisions. Let me start with the Nasdaq here. This is a daily chart. I've drawn this horizontal line because that is a key Previous resistance here, you see the resistance, this may act as support on the way back down and this is the 50 day moving average, 50 period moving average. And this will slowly creep up and we may see price meet that level there. So we may see the moving average slowly move up and, and hit here and price may touch there. That's what I'm thinking might happen on the Nasdaq. So at this moment in time I think we may see some further selling, I don't know. Because the price on some stock is showing me something different but I'll discuss that shortly. So at the moment, this is what I think might happen for the NASDAQ. This is the level I'm watching. Now, of course, it doesn't mean price is going to attack this level. It's just my analysis at this moment in time. And this is a Sunday as I do this video. Let me talk about the Dow Jones now. Now, last week I talked about this. I drew this horizontal line here because of this previous resistance on the left here. And I said the price is up here and I said I think that price might touch this level and hold. It did. Now you can see this bullish activity. It was holding quite nicely and it looked like it was about to turn and go higher and then the COVID news came out very negative for the market and a huge drop. But now I'm going to go into something a bit more technical. I have talked about this in the past but for new people you might not know what this is. So what I'm going to do is take a Fibonacci tool because Fibonacci is very powerful as far as I'm concerned when trading. I take the low point here, I drag this tool up to the high point on this daily chart on the Dow Jones. Right, you can see that price magically, it's incredible how this stuff works, is stopped dead on the 61.8% Fibonacci level. Now I talk about this stuff regularly, this golden ratio is very amazing sometimes how this works. It stopped dead here. Now, does that mean it's going to rebound? No, it doesn't. But what it means is we should be paying attention to this level on the Dow Jones because it may hold here and then we should start looking for signs of a turnaround. So that's what I see on the Dow Jones. Now, the S&P, this is going to take a little bit longer to explain. The S&P 500, this is probably the most important indice at the moment. You'll see I've drawn a trend line here, right back down here, back to February 2020. This trend line goes all the way up here. Got these touch points here. Then I have this horizontal line. So let me zoom in. But I just wanted to show you the trend line first of all. So I'll zoom in here. I want to explain what I'm seeing. So this horizontal line here is, I can move that up slightly actually. It's uh, the previous resistance here. You see back in September, price came down, came up to it, found a bit of resistance but eventually broke through that level and it stayed above that level for some time. But This is where it's getting a bit more advanced guys. So we have, we have a trend line and you see how price is just nose diving significantly on the S&P 500 and we are approaching this level, this previous resistance. This level is 4,000 550 thereabouts so please take a note guys if, if you're really interested in trading please take a note of this level 4550 on the S&P 500 that level thereabouts is a key level because we have this support we have this 50 period moving average 50 day moving average you see how it's slowly coming up to this level as well and we have this trend line so what might happen, price might come down, might take a few days and, and, and it coincide with all this, this confluence, we call it. 
you've got that line, that line, and the moving average. So this is why I've highlighted this red. I think this is where the market will probably stall. So around 4,550, I would say 4,500 to 4,550 on the S&P. Please, guys, if you're interested, like I said, please make a note of that level. You need to be watching this level. If we start seeing price reaching this area, particularly where I've put this red box, which is that 4,500 level, on the S&P 500, that is a worrying sign. At the moment, I don't see the worry. I think this is just uh, hot air and people panicking. So just bear that in mind, guys, on the S&P 500, because this is the kind of barometer for, for um, the stock markets that the majority of people are watching. The S&P 500. 4,500 to 4,550. Key, key level to watch. I can't stress that enough. Okay, I hope I think I've done that to death. There is my analysis on the indices so far. Now I want to start talking about some stocks. Now if you believe that the um, this coronavirus, this new variant, is going to be a shocker for the world, then you might want to be looking at COVID stocks. So I'm just going to talk about some COVID stocks, and then I will talk about what I'm actually seeing in a positive light, just so you can see an overview of everything that I'm seeing. So let me just go over to a stock now. Let's start with Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE. As you can see, guys, as soon as the uh, negative news came out about this COVID variant, immediately we get this gap up and, and a, and a uh, well, just a significant bullish move. You can see the volume increase down here as well. But that uh, candlestick shows indecisive behavior because if you look, it's got long wicks either side going up and going down and it, the price is contained stopped in the middle so it, it shows that traders don't actually they're not too sure what to make of this and there's a lot of indecision there now if I, I show you another stock another covid situation this moderna uh ticker symbol mrna look we have a kind of similar situation here with that this price bar it makes a long wick but then comes back down indicating possible reversal uh, and this wasn't actually going to go any higher we don't know i'm just pointing out what the price action is showing and then if i also look at zoom zoom video communications ticker symbol zm everyone knows about zoom i think you see here guys in fact i'll, I'll go down to the five minute chart so this is another covid stock so the market opens it gaps up see this big gap up here and that looks very positive I'm sure lots of people jumped in at that point but then what happens look what happens it comes right back down again and just goes sideways again shows indecision to me so that's three COVID stocks that are showing indecisive behavior they're not, they're not showing really bullish signs that people think or traders think that COVID's coming back and, and the world's going to go into full lockdown again it doesn't the price action is not showing me that this is what I mean about po the positives of all of this. And I'm just starting. So I go back out to the daily chart on this Zoom stock. And you can see it's been sold off for a long time. We get this negative news and, and immediately it spikes up. Now, like I said, guys, if you think that COVID is going to uh, take hold of the, the, the uh, world, then these are the three stocks you probably want to be watching. Zoom, Moderna and Pfizer. There are others, but these are the three that I picked out. So, yeah, keep your eye on those if you think that COVID is taking hold, but I don't see that at this moment in time. Now, I'm going to start delving even deeper now to show you more information, just so you can see, a, like I said, a better picture of what I'm seeing. Let me show you something I've not shown people before on this channel. Some people know about this, some people do not. This is called the, in the trading world, they call this the fear gauge. Because when you get spikes up, it means that there's a lot of fear in the market and volatility is kicking in. So let me just show you why I'm not too worried at this point. You know, the coronavirus started hitting the headlines around 2020, February, right? Look what happens on this chart. Huge amounts of fear and, vo and volatility kicking in. By March, look where it was, all the way up here. Okay? It was really important information, this is, guys. So massive, massive amounts of fear. 
Look where we are, where we are now. We're in November. Yes, we've got a spike up. Do you see the fear and the volatility anywhere near what it was in February, March last year? Nowhere near, guys. So at the moment, this looks fine. And I'm not saying that it's, it can't change because, of course, it can. But at the moment, I've drawn this horizontal line just to show you that this does often. The fear gauge pokes up, comes back down, pokes up, comes back down, pokes up, comes back down. Now, another thing to mention, guys. If if we see that this this get this, uh, please, guys. I, I'm I'm trying to help you and trying to give you the information, train you. Please make a note of this. Do a bookmark of this VIX index because if you see it in the next week that this is moving higher and staying above 25. If it stays above 25, that will be a worrying sign. So for now, I do not see the concern. This is nowhere near, it's not spiking anywhere near like it did in uh, February, March 2020. But if it stays above 25, then we should probably start paying attention. And of course, I will try and keep abreast of all of that. So there's the VIX. I thought you might be interested in that. Another thing to mention, guys, is that we just had Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, which is essentially a four-day weekend for most uh, people in the US, including traders. So there's not full participation in the market at the moment. So what we saw on Friday is not full participation participation from the big players. So th the volume is much lower than normal. So also take that into consideration. This could just be... Uh, fear from the novices more than the institutions so i'm just trying to point it all out to you just the, the facts guys the, this is, like i said this is the fear gauge the the uh, vix very very useful indicator uh, but now let me start talking about actual stocks just so you can see what i'm seeing there now silvergate capital i'm going to start with this one because i actually own this stock and i talked about it in episode 94 i've drawn these horizontal lines to show you where the high type flag formation was or is I said it was a buy if we breached this high, and we did. And immediately, unfortunately, there was an immediate sell-off with the overall market, and this stock got hit quite badly. So anyone that's in at the breakout point would be feeling some pain. Now, I did actually mention in episode 94 that I wanted to try and take this near 200, and I have taken it near 200. If you want to see where I took that, it's in the comments section of episode 94. You will see where I've taken this trade. I basically, the 200 levels around number, and then I got slightly lower than that. And But guys, look what's happened. So it's come down. We had this COVID, horrible news about COVID, but look at the price actually. It's still holding at its support level. It hasn't just battered its way through the support. And this is a really strong stock. I can't stress this enough because of the crypto theme. If you're missing, if you're not, if you haven't watched that video, episode 94, and you haven't looked at Silvergate, you should because it's it could be a really high flying stock guys and and it's holding at the support doesn't mean it's going to stay there because of the covid situation but it is holding at this support level silvergate so one to get on your watch list or even buy if you wanted to that's entirely up to you the other one is fcx which i also took and i've mentioned before uh, but i bought this just under 38 dollars 50 and look what's happening on this stock, guys. So we have this major support, which I've represented here by this horizontal line. You can see why we have price touching it at multiple points. That's major support for the stock. Price comes down just like these other stocks, makes a, a low point, then comes all, all the way back up again on the Friday, indicating that that was panic selling and potentially new buyers are coming into this stock. So I still see FCX as a buy, at least for now. Of course, if things start developing and changing and this COVID situation is worse than we think, or I think, then you might want to consider getting out of this trade. And the same with Silvergate. If price starts tanking down here, then I'm going to have to take the loss on the trade, and that will be the end of it. Finally, let me discuss some sectors, two sectors. Uranium, I talked about last week as well. I said, I'll draw this horizontal line in. Take a note of that bullet, that price bar there, first of all. See that bar? This one. Uh, if I draw a, 
horizontal line. I talked about that level. I said I think this uranium ETF, I expect price to attack the 25 level thereabouts. And we have uh, almost almost fully predicted that. Um, and what we see, guys, is again, a bullish price bar forming at major support. So this could be a buying opportunity for uranium stocks. I'm not saying it is at this point. We need to see a bit more follow through on this. But this is looking positive for uranium if, only if, we see follow through and this um, this COVID situation doesn't uh, increase. You know, people don't start getting really, really fearful. But that's why you've got that VIX index to keep an eye on. So if we see a bit more follow through, I think the uranium stocks will do well again. And then the financial sector. Here it is again, guys. We see major support here. Uh, COVID news comes out, price gaps down, nasty drop, and forms another bullish sign to me at key support. Why is it bullish? Because price goes down, creates a wick, comes all the way back up again, and almost closes higher. So that looks bullish. But again, just like um, the uranium sector, I want to see a bit more follow through to validate this. So what I'm trying to say to you guys is, this at the moment, volume was low on Friday because most of the professionals were on holiday because of Thanksgiving. The VIX index isn't skyrocketing, so that's the fear index. And we see all these price bars at major support areas holding. So that says to me that this at the moment isn't as bad as it looks. Of course, anything can change in the markets and I also try and stay on top of that. But I just want to show you what my view of what I'm seeing. This does not look too bad at this moment. It could all change from Monday. Because uh, it's a Sunday as I do this video. Now this is much longer than normal this video. But I thought it was really important to try and explain what is actually going on. And for you guys to particularly pay attention to that VIX chart. 25. We want to see this um, below 25 by the end of next week. If it's not, then we can start getting concerned. Uh, and the S&P 500, that level. I've discovered, I've, sorry, I've covered a lot of ground here, guys, an awful lot of information. I really hope it's useful. I'm sure that most of you won't even watch this to the end, but if you did, well done. I wish you the best of luck. I hope you learned some information. If you like what I'm doing, as always, guys, please like and subscribe and comment. Tell your friends. I want to try and grow this channel and help as many people as I can. Believe me when I say, financially, this channel does not pay me much money at all. But I'm just doing it to help people. And maybe some reward will come out of it eventually. So wish you the best of luck, guys. I'll speak to you very soon. Thank you very much.